guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and today I have invaded the compound in Miami. You may know it from Guga Food, sous vide everything, Guga. And we raided the fridge and I found a Wagyu brisket, but we're not just gonna cook a Wagyu brisket on a pellet cooker. I brought down an offset smoker that I got in Orlando and we're gonna do an offset brisket. I'm gonna teach Guga how to use an offset smoker. He's eating great food all around the world. Now he's gonna be running a fire by himself. If you guys don't know who Guga is, he has done an incredible amount of cooking meat with fire and I'm a big fan of cooking meat with fire. And you've done some of the craziest experiments and you have tested kind of the boundaries of what culinary knowledge is. And uh, today we're gonna do something more old school. We're gonna just have wood logs, cook on an offset smoker. But we raided your fridge and found this Wagyu brisket. Because I see that, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. I hope you're okay with that. But totally what we've fine. got, what we've got is an incredible looking brisket. Can you tell me about it? Yeah, it's a Marvelous Core 9 Wagyu from Australia. It is one of my favorite briskets. It's delicious. And I'll tell you one thing, mm -hmm. I've cooked a lot of briskets. That's true. But I've never cooked an offset. For me, offset smoking is the king of barbecue, and this is one of the very best out there. Today we're gonna do offset. What are you, are you nervous about it at all, or are you like, I got this? I'm not nervous because you're here, so it doesn't bother me at all. It's gonna be a piece of cake. Well, I think it, I just follow your lead, brother. Okay, good, and we also <laughs> brought in a professional, Joe Yim, he's gonna be helping us later. Oh. But first we have to trim this and season it. Now, I gotta say, I have, an issue with the, the brisket trimming where you take the fat off this end? Yes. Because traditional I, that, Texas that style. That used to be my way. Oh, you I, Because of Brad. Shout out to you. Shout out Chud's Barbecue. Yeah, he uh, he fixed me. Let's just say that. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> but I used to trim it all out because, you know, the point has so much fat. Yeah, that's true. And then I go like, ah, oh, it's not good. But then Brad came over he's like, that's not the right way. I was like, <laughs> yes, sir. No problem. <laughs> you learn from the best. <laughs> yeah, so on an offset, we're gonna render this fat down on the top really well. So uh, let's get to trimming, I guess. By the way, the marbling on this is incredible. Like, mm. if we screw this up, I'll take responsibility. There's, Jeremy, this should be amazing. It's not possible. You cannot screw it up a Wagyu brisket. Unless you put it in the, even if you put it in the microwave, it will still be <laughs> edible. So if you guys don't know, Google has put briskets in the microwave and cooked them. So I mean, yeah. any method of cooking I think you've tried other than this. Uh, yeah, fair to say. Yeah, so the last one, in my opinion, the best one, is gonna be offset cooking. So let's get into this and uh, we'll trim it up. They already did a lot of trimming for us. All right, dude, look at this marbling. Yeah. A lot of people worry about trimming all this off. If there's some pretty thick stuff like that, I might come in here, just clean it up a little bit, but I'm not worried. But with the airflow on the offset, this is gonna render out pretty well. But we can turn that into tallow, we can turn it into sausage, whatever you want. Yeah, 100%, I never like to let it go to waste. Or burgers. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. totally. All right, guys, this bite right here, you see the crazy marbling? This is gonna be the best bite on the whole brisket, and in my opinion, the whole cow. But that's gonna be incredible. When we cut this up and cube it at the end, oh. I say be ruthless when trimming brisket. Oh my God, did you see that? Look at this marbling. <laughs> this is the lean part of the brisket, and this is the marbling. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah. What are they feeding these guys? A lot of grains. They left a lot of this on there. Mm -hmm. um, I've noticed this with kosher briskets too, um, but for our purposes today, we're going to kind of straighten this out. Cut through a lot of beef here. Oh, jeez. This marbling. It's like every time you cut, it looks better. Yeah. Right? I mean, this is ridiculous. It's crazy, man. This is maybe the best I've ever seen. What do you expect when you're cooking with Google? Wow. We'll round this off so we don't have stuff that's pointy. A lot of people talk about aerodynamic when it comes to trimming a brisket for an offset smoker. Mm -hmm. It's not generating lift or anything, but it's kind of the surface area to volume. So if we eliminate stuff that's kind of sticking out and can dry out, then, uh, then we've done our jobs. Get in here. And so brisket is a horribly uneven cut, so we're trying to make it as even as possible. Joe is even more ruthless in trimming briskets. Shows no mercy at all. Yeah, no, I feel like also whenever you're cooking a brisket, you know, you're spending so much time, it's better off just getting the best bite so that exactly. makes sure every single bite counts. And like, this is not gonna go to waste. Right. You know, we can put it to better use than if it burns or anything like that, yeah. you know? Let it, let it be a star somewhere else instead yes. of like the thing that just you the, don't want to eat yeah, on a great brisket. I agree. The fat is softer too. Different really fatty acid composition. You can feel it start to melt in your hand. 100%. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. On the top side, we want about a quarter of an inch. This actually feels about right. 
and kind of a hack for leaving the fat on, is you can just make like a, a cut like that, and then by the time you're done cooking, it's not even gonna show up, and you say, oh, there's enough fat there, we can trim some of this down. Oh, that's cool, I've never tried that. Yeah, it's just an easy, because after 12 hours of smoke, it like gets black and barky, you're not even gonna notice. But if you get a bald spot, but doesn't notice. it hurt you like when you see like little pieces like this and if you're trimming the brisket and then yeah. you just scorch it or whatever? Yeah. It just, it, it breaks my heart. <laughs> yeah, but it's just it part is of what the it process. Is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have like a select brisket, not only are you fighting with less marbling, but the fatty acid composition is usually different and the fat doesn't render at the same temperature. So you have to cook it hotter to try to get it to render. And then you can burn things, especially with the lack of marbling. But if you look just at this end piece, I mean, the that's whole gonna thing be good. Be used. That's why I said you can literally put it in the microwave. But don't do that, everybody. Yeah. That, that, that's how good it is. <laughs> yeah, this is crazy. I might just leave this like that. Now it feels complete. <laughs> now, now it feels like I've arrived. I made it, guys. There you go. <laughs> but in Texas, they say salt and pepper. Mm hmm. Right? I only know of a couple places that actually just use salt and pepper. What you should assume they mean is seasoned salt of some kind and black pepper. Mm -hmm. And so today, being that we're at the Guga compound, I think we should use some Guga all-purpose rub. Um, it's got some salt in there. It's got brown sugar, uh, garlic, onion. So kind of the same things that you would get in a seasoned salt. That's why you can use it for everything. And then we're gonna add some coarse black pepper. And I always start on the meat side because with Texas style barbecue, the fat side is the presentation side. 100%. So we want that to look good. Yeah. So. And I, would, I will, I, and I would argue that also, you should also add a little bit of an extra salt on the brisket too. Yeah? Yes, because he needs it, so. Well, with this much fat, it typically kind of drowns out the, the salt a little bit. And you, yeah, you know, I think you're probably right. Probably more salt than like a, a prime or a choice. Yeah. yeah. Like always, everybody season the sides. Don't be a rookie. <laughs> so this is gonna give it like a nice orange color. And it's gonna look really handsome from the time it goes on. And it's only going to get darker and better looking from there. This is our presentation side. Gotta make it look pretty. I'll do my best. It smells great. This has a lot of exposed meat right here, so we're going to put a, like a blocking log to prevent all the harsh airflow from hitting it directly to keep it nice and soft, mm -hmm. nice and pliable, so that we get to eat all of it in the end, nothing goes to waste. What do you like better, here or here? I, my favorite bite on the whole animal is right here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this, this marbling, and then you get it super barky, Wait, but still that, juicy. The whole animal, that's your favorite bite? Yes. More than picanha? Yes. Sorry, we're no longer friends. It was a good run that we had though, Guga. Goodbye, friend. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> picanha is delicious. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go relatively heavy because we didn't add extra pepper on the bottom side. And this is gonna make it look really good on there. Yeah, and so we can get away with a little bit more salt on the fat since it's not gonna penetrate all the way through the meat. Look at that. Always season from up. If not, you get like, you know what I mean? Like, right. So, better distribution. 100%. Should look pretty. It does look pretty. We have a peppery, nicely seasoned brisket and it's full of marbling. We got a Workhorse 1975 and some oak wood rolling out there. Let's do it. All right. So, we lift this million pound door. Ugh. And then we put this on. So we're gonna put the point toward the fire because there's even more marble. I mean, there's crazy marbling in the whole thing. Right. And then this half of the brisket, so the side that's opposite the mohawk, I tend to cheat toward the fire just because it can also absorb a little bit more punishment. And I want this to bark up nicely. Mm. But now that that's on there, we can close this thing up, talk a little bit about running the fire, which is gonna be the biggest difference for you because you've trimmed lots of briskets, seasoned lots of briskets, cooked a million of them. Mine is turn it on or use, you know, the Weber. Yeah, yeah, so. both valid ways, but today we're going extra old school. Let's do it, baby. All right, so well, the goal is to start at about 250 degrees. Rather than setting the temperature and you let the, the grill take care of the smoke flavor, you have to adjust both the smoke flavor and the temperature. You're in charge of both of these with an offset smoker. So what we want in the beginning is we want pretty smoky because that's when it's gonna absorb the most amount of smoke flavor and we're gonna start to lay on the bark. So we want probably 250 degrees and smoky. You can make it smokier by reducing oxygen into the firebox, by adding bigger chunks of wood, by adding greener or heavier wood. But today we have all the same wood, so we can add more wood and kind of close the firebox door down a little bit. And so you have a nice kind of white smoke. You don't want it super dark, but we can adjust when you get there. So don't burn yourself, but 
We have a coal bed, and so you want to probably put it across the coal bed so it'll catch and burn an open flame. Got it. But probably for this, if we kind of, this is way easier with a shovel, by the way. We spread the coals out like that and then put this kind of crossways. Mm. Then it's gonna have oxygen underneath and it'll catch fire. Then you can control how smoky it is with the door. The goal, generally speaking, at the beginning of, of a brisket cook for me is I want it very smoky. And the only thing I'm concerned about is that this remains in open flame. As mm. long as this is burning, I don't care how smoky it is. Like it can be extra, extra smoky, totally fine. But if this begins to just smolder, it can over smoke the brisket. I see. And so you definitely want the fire going. Definitely open flame always, yeah. The beginning, I'm trying to lay on um, smoke flavor, but I don't want to start off too hot because then the proteins in the brisket can begin to coagulate and start to get the curl. You ever had a brisket curl on you? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, so try to start slow enough that we don't get the curl. And then at that point, we have smoke and it's slowly coming up to temperature. Then I'm gonna start rendering fat. So the second stage of cooking, I cook at like 275 instead of 250. And then we'll wrap it and try to finish it off. And then I go even a little hotter because I want to get done. Cool. Yep. So we'll kind of close this down. We're up to 225 now. We're getting there. You can tap that in a little bit. Let's take a look. Yeah, if we look, this, this is how I evaluate things. What I want to see from the wood in there is flames that are like this tall. Mm. It's like the fire's burning. Like a nice little flame. Yeah, so a small flame, and then it also kind of eliminates radiant heat because you can easily burn things in an offset smoker. Mm. So I think I'm going to even close this down a little bit more. So I'm going to lift this up and allow it to get even a little bit more closed to get a little smokier. And then if the fire goes out completely, you'll know because it'll be very slow. Like it looks like a cloud coming out of the smokestack. So we don't want that, but we want to actually see a significant amount of smoke because in these first few hours, that's our opportunity to really do, well, yeah, in the first few hours, that's our opportunity to really put on a good smoke flavor. So when you go to a barbecue restaurant like Franklin or uh, Terry Black's or any of those places in Texas, and you take a bite and you're like, oh, it's so smoky and good. It's because they're burning a real wood fire, laying on lots of smoke flavor. Right at the beginning. Yeah. So, so would you say that the beginning is everything? The beginning isn't everything, but it's the most important part, I think. Now just maintain the fire. Yeah, maintain the fire and just wait 12 hours and piece of cake, you're yeah. done. As easy as you get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very stressful. Like one thing is if I cook for me and screw up, right. it's fine. That's the thing, whenever yeah. you cook for other people, you just want to make sure everybody's okay. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And he's like, oh no, don't, why do you have to do this now? Right, 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 but right. It's all good. So we're at 225 mm -hmm. and I think we're kind of stable there. We want to be at 250. So let's grab another log, throw it on. And then if we do that, I think it'll get even a little bit smokier, which is what we want to. It's good. Okay. All right, Guga. So this thing has been on for a while. I think it's time that we check and see how you're doing. See if your fire management skills are on par or if it needs a little work. Yeah, well, I hope I did a good job. Let's see. Yeah. You ready? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Ugh, so heavy. Yeah, it's 150,000 pounds of lid. What do you think, Jeremy? Uh, it looks pretty good. The bark is nice and dark, but I think for a real evaluation and a, and a game plan for the future, I think I should bring on a pro. My buddy, Joe Yim, that you know, of course. Joe's my brother. Exactly. From another mother. <laughs> totally. And he's worked at some of the best barbecue restaurants in Texas. So if you want a real professional evaluation of how you're doing and maybe things you might tweak, you should bring Joe on and he'll give you his opinion. Let's do it. All right, so, what do you think, Joe? Yeah, it looks great. I think just, just to see where we're at, I'm just gonna temp it real quick, just right in the center of the point. We're at 158 right here. And then let's see where the lean is at. Oh, the lean's at 170, so it's a little bit more ahead. So. At this point, like, you know, I think temp wise, I think you tell us all, all the time to people is that you can't really cook brisket by temp because it always feels different. 100%. And I've never actually cooked a Wagyu brisket before. This is my first time. Um, so the things that I'm looking for, if you just kind of poke the top of the brisket right there, it's kind of springy. Like, you, yeah. you feel it. Like, that bark has got a nice color to it, but that bounce that we feel, it's telling me there's quite a bit of moisture still left in that brisket. Mm. So even though the internal temp is feeling pretty good and still needs a little more time, but we, what we really want to do is draw out some of that moisture even more and get that bark on top nice and crispy. Mm -hmm. So certain things that we can do is raise the temp and open up that stack just a little bit to get. How much are we going to raise? Uh, I would say right now at this point, we can open up some fat. Yeah, that's it. And then we'll probably keep the temp. We were running about 275. 280 yeah so we might go to closer to 290 maybe close to 300 and if it gets too hot then we can open up the door just so it doesn't get 
you know we don't have this really really high heat with a bunch of convection but at this point it looks great that lean back there because of the way that Jeremy trimmed it it's not curling up too much so we're in a good place right now beautiful at this point we're really just worrying about getting a lot of excess moisture cooked out of it and then afterwards hopefully be ready to wrap soon as so, long as we don't mess it up oh we're not gonna mess it up my first offset don't no, mess it up please help me not mess it up joe if I anything we'll blame jeremy it's all good i, I like it it's your <laughs> fault jeremy yeah 100 all right so let's close this down close it. Okay. and then uh yeah we'll just let it rock at a higher temperature with a little more airflow for the next couple hours love it you've been doing this for a long time is there any way to have an air conditioning kind of style <laughs> air conditioning kind of style yeah this is hot joe no you just guys the suffering is part of the taste dude Oh, that's why barbecue <laughs> tastes so good. Mm. There's a lot of suffering. Mm. Nah, that's it. Explanation is yeah, all. I get go. it now. <laughs> makes sense. All <laughs> makes sense. Yo, this is taking forever. It takes a long, long time. I've been reading your cookbook, but uh, I've learned nothing so far. <laughs> Shocking. Well, if you don't get the blank one, you get the real one. Maybe oh. you'll learn something. Okay, maybe so. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is taking forever. Yeah, we're, we're getting there. We're is getting that normal? There. Pretty normal on an offset, yeah. <laughs> it takes a long, long time. Fair enough. It'll be worth it in the end, I promise. Jeremy, I need you to take a look at it. Let's do it. I mean, it looks pretty nice to me. You tell me. Bark is great. That feels really nice. Do you smell it? Yeah, I smell it. It smells so good. <laughs> That's rendered well. I think it's time to wrap it. Really? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Excellent. That's good. You, wow, even the like little crunchy, you heard that? You hear a little crunchiness there, yeah. Ah, who, who would have thought I can cook on an offset, my brother? I, I knew you could do it. <laughs> I didn't doubt <laughs> well, you for a session. I'm a little bit surprised myself, I'm not gonna lie, but it all depends in the end. The end is everything. Yeah. If it don't taste good, then I screw it all up. I think it's gonna be awesome. All right, yeah. let's go. Let's go wrap it. Now, the rule is with butcher paper is you want to wrap it tightly because the looser the butcher paper is, the more it wicks out water and the more it slows down your cook. So. A tight package is Got it. what we're after. The tighter the better. Generally speaking, yes. Got it. We want to make sure that we finish with the fat side up, meat side down. Got it. This is actually an interesting way of folding the paper that I've never considered. Totally fine. Oh, really? But I've never, I've never done it like that. Have you, Joe? Okay. I don't know. You tell me. So now, now we're fat side down. Yeah, correct. Okay. Just keep going yep. and we end it that way, correct? Look that, at that. So now we're fat side up. There you go. Nice job. Look at that. Yeah. Fat side down. And then you may want to tuck in that last bit of butcher paper like this, like fold this part in just a little bit. So that we end on so the final. So it's easy to grab, yeah. Got it. From either side. And then, fat side up. Wow. Unconventional technique, but the wrapping job was pro. Didn't even know. Yeah, it was a good job. Okay. That's, that's actually really good. All right. I, I may adopt that, actually. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> wow, okay. All right, now, back into the smoker to finish it up. So the plan is, back in the smoker, we're gonna cook it to tenderness, which is not very far away, and then it's gonna go in the warmer, because you have a warmer, like a pro at 145 until tomorrow because a nice long heated rest at 145 like 12 hours pretty much ideal i've noticed that that makes a huge difference that's why i got the warmer yeah, everybody skips it but it's such an important part it's the part of the cook if you don't do it it's, it makes a huge difference yeah yeah totally agreed all right let's get it back on the smoker let's go finish this up yep oh it's heavy it's real heavy yeah Now set it and forget it? No, 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 no. This is an offset. Correct. My bad. <laughs> set it and forget it does not exist with offset smokers. <laughs> so we're gonna cook it till about 200 degrees, just depending on how it feels, maybe a little higher, a little lower, depending. But after that, it goes in the warmer at 145, and then we eat it tomorrow. Just Beautiful. like all the best Texas barbecue restaurants do it. Damn right. Yep. You're a good teacher, bro. Oh, thank you. We probed it, it feels like butter, so it's time to put it in the warmer. And it smells great. It really does smell good. Mm-hmm. Barky, smoky. It's gonna be juicy. I can't wait to eat this tomorrow. Yep, absolutely. Into the warmer it goes, into tomorrow. S sounds wrong to say, but it's oh so right when you eat it. 110%, couldn't yeah. agree more. Excellent. See you.
any specific way you want me to do it, Jeremy? No, however you want. It's your brisket. All right. And actually did a remarkably good job wrapping it. Okay. I like Okay. Almost looks like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh. So Jeremy, what do you think? I think I'm actually legitimately very impressed. Like if, if I went to a top Texas barbecue restaurant and they unwrap this and put it on the board, I'm like, I'm eating good. Oh, so, uh, Jeremy, you're making, oh, I got a new picture. You know, I was gonna say you're uh, making me blush. <laughs> making me blush. But no, this is, this is great. The bark is really dark. Um, you can see that the fat's rendered. Yeah. And the, the seasoning has kind of become integrated into the bark. It's not like sand on the top. Yeah. So everything is pliable. I mean, looks really good. Now all we have to do is slice it, taste it, and see if it's got that authentic taste. If it doesn't taste good, all of this would have been for nothing. It, and this took some time, Jeremy. And a lot of suffering and sweating. And uh, it's only worth it if you produce like a really smoky, really good product. Otherwise, like, why would anybody bother doing it? Exactly. Makes yeah. sense. So, slice it up. Let's go. Let's do it. Okay. Oh, nice. Wow. All right. So, this looks incredible. I know it's all going to be juicy, but I want to go directly for my favorite bite mm. on the entire animal. Mm -hmm. This stuff right here is mm. going to be barky. And if it's, if it's this juicy, this is going to be some of the most amazing brisket I've had. Ooh. You can tell that it's tender just by the slicing it. Yeah, it looks good. Ooh, ooh. Why are we looking at it? It should be showing the camera. All right. They need to see it. Yes, okay. Mm, squeeze. For, for the people, mm. it's juicy. We're not gonna slice it raging hot because we don't want it to oxidize, but. That looks good. This is like the Mount Everest of brisket, I think. That looks good, that looks good. Okay. Gotta cut enough to feed the crew. Yeah. Okay. So, Just go in? Yeah, grab it. Okay. Wow. All right. Wow. I'm gonna find out. Man. Yes. Can, Can we, we stop, stop talking about it? Yes. Okay. okay. Cheers. 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 Oh man. Mm. It's so fatty and so good. The right the right amount of salt, the, the Google rub was it's literally on point. I like to talk when some things are so good. I usually have my two other guys talk. That way I can just savor it. But apparently now I gotta talk. That is a 10 out of 10. We'll highly recommend everybody. Oh, that's so good. Mm. That's really good, man. Mm. Wow. Hold on. So not soft and tender. Yeah, it's so good. We gotta bring Joe on here. We gotta bring the professional on. Joe! Oh, Joe! Lord have mercy. Oh boy. This. That's <laughs> right, exactly. This should be illegal. Wow. I think, I think it's, it's illegal in six states. states. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you can see like the way that you trimmed it too, like that fat that's on the edge right there, it's not white and uh, like it has that really great kind of like, it almost cooked into the top of that lean. And that's exactly. what we're for. This is good. Right. It looks oh. right? Oh, it's so yeah. juicy when you squeeze it. So the, the lean is even juicy. All right. I say we move this a little bit. We don't spill on the floor. We'll cut this in. Okay. Let's go in. Yep. Let's try it. Yep. If this wow. is good, we know we've arrived. When you squeeze the lean, Ooh. all juices come out, everybody. But I'm gonna stop squeezing and I'm gonna squeeze it in my mouth. <laughs> That's a better plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Enough talking. Here's Cheers, everybody. Mm. Dude. Mm -hmm. Even the lean is good. What What do you think? You think you're gonna use an offset smoker in the future ever, or are you gonna be like, nah, too much suffering? Well, if I'm feeling like you want to have a beer and you want to chat with your friends, right. and you want to spend the time outside, uh -huh. it's totally fantastic for that. But if you're in a hurry, and you want to get other things done, side dishes and stuff like that, take some time. Right. Yeah. I feel like it's a, um, a labor of love, let's yes. just put it that way. You know, you sit down outside, you're exactly. constantly moving the fire, and if it's kind of chilly outside, it's even better, yeah. right? That way you feel that, and yeah. it's an experience. Let's totally. just say that, if you're going to yeah. cook this. But the flavor that comes out of this is just sick. That's all I gotta say. It's a, <laughs> it's a sick flavor, yeah. everybody. <laughs> so, Guga, if we left that offset smoker here, mm. would you put it to work? Yes. It's a workhorse pit. Are you giving me the? the, the are I, you gonna, if you can cook like this, you, you need an offset smoker to, to make some of this stuff. Oh, are you you're making my arm? Uh, how do you say that? Uh, Goose bump? Yes. <laughs> Okay. Wow, I got an offset. Good, yeah, oh, it's yours. Oh, yeah, baby, let's go. <laughs>
<laughs> thank you, Jeremy. Sure, man. Thank you, thank okay. you. Does, does he come with it? No, no. This... It would be perfect because you know how you turn on the knob? Joe, you will be my knob, uh, Joe. Yeah, yes. If you call me, I'll be here. Joe, yeah. Yeah, let me know. That's it. Okay. It's no longer hard to do, everybody. Turn on Joe and you're good to go. <laughs> ha! Anything else we need to try? Yep. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe to uh, Mad Scientist Barbecue if you haven't already. See you guys on the next one. Take care. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks, Google. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for, for, thanks for, for being so cool. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it.